One reason that you're struggling to lose weight is that your hormones are out of whack. They're thinking estrogen, testosterone, like female hormones, like menopause kind of hormones. But I'm really talking about hormones in general. So your hormones include insulin. Insulin is a hormone. And cortisol, which is a stress hormone. Melatonin, which is actually a sleep hormone. And um, also we can include, I was just thinking, I don't have anything else written down, but that was, it's like at the circadian rhythm of your life. But cortisol actually can cause you to hold on to fat around your midsection. And it's well known, a lot of people are aware nowadays that cortisol can be a problem. But you're probably not aware of why cortisol can be a problem um, because that part's probably not so well known. But cortisol and melatonin actually are opposite each other. But so like your cortisol goes high in the morning, your blood sugar spikes in the morning because your body needs the energy to get out of bed and go. So cortisol and blood sugar spike in the morning to get you going. And then because of that, your insulin also spikes because it needs to bring the blood sugar back down. So your hormones are constantly in this balancing act. It's like a dance. They're always trying to do all of the right things. If your body is not processing blood sugar well, if you're insulin resistant, that blood sugar can stay high in the morning and then your body is constantly making more and more and more insulin to help bring down that blood sugar, which also in turn drives cortisol as well. So cortisol is opposite of melatonin. So if your cortisol is low all day long, which also makes you tired and groggy, groggy, makes you wanna sleep, makes you cranky, makes all of those things happen, then your melatonin doesn't get the message and it messes up your circadian rhythm. So you're tired when you're supposed to be awake and vibrant and you're awake when you're supposed to be sleeping because you never really get the drastic switch. So it should be high in the morning and then it should switch towards the evening. And if your body isn't making that switch, then it, it causes you problems and you have trouble sleeping and all of the things. Not to mention that cortisol, like I said, triggers those fat storing hormones like insulin. One of insulin's main jobs is to store fat. That's its job. So if you're consistently eating foods that drive insulin up, like sugars and um, like fruit juices, it's okay to eat the fruits most of the time. I recommend that you eat like tart fruits, but you wanna eat the whole fruit with the fiber included, all of the things that come with the fruit because if you're not eating the whole fruit, then you're basically just getting the sweet part. So fruit juice is a big no-no. It's as bad as drinking soda. So let's stay away from the fruit juice. Let's make sure that we're keeping our blood sugar balanced throughout the day by doing Mm, not the things that people have talked about doing for years and years and years because those are old paradigms that don't really apply anymore. Um, of course, eating protein helps keep your blood sugar low because it keeps you satisfied. Eating healthy fats help keep your blood sugar low because it keeps your body satisfied. And avoiding things like carbohydrates, like simple carbohydrates, and sugar straight up is a simple carbohydrate. Um, those kinds of things help reduce the amount of insulin that your body makes. It reduces the amount of insulin that your body requires. So that's part of that puzzle. And if you're doing a lot of things that cause insulin to spike, if you're doing things that are causing your cortisol to spike, then you're triggering those fat storage hormones. So, and all of that ties together. Like when people talk about having PCOS, then you're also looking at you know, PCOS is a hormone regulation issue. And typically women who have PCOS end up with high testosterone 
because they're they have blood sugar imbalances insulin imbalances and there's a whole big thing that goes into that but PCOS is a hormone balance issue and it usually starts with a blood sugar balance problem which is why they give you metformin if you have PCOS to try to calm down your symptoms of PCOS because they're trying to get the blood sugar regulated which should be done more with nutrition and diet and exercise those are the things that are really really important if you're someone who has PCOS you need to use your muscles because you need to burn off the sugar you need to um, employ stress reducing things to help your body be stressed less I did an entire video the other day on parasympathetic and sympathetic dominance because sympathetic dominance is when your fight-or-flight system kicks in and stays kicked in and your body never really gets a chance to relax so that raises your blood pressure it raises your heart rate it raises your cortisol it raises your blood sugar all of those things because when you're in a fight or flight situation you want your blood to go to your muscles to your brain you want to be able to think quickly and move quickly and run or do whatever you have to do to be safe right but if if your body is constantly in a fight or flight mode then you end up not burning off that hormone burst that you get so basically your sympathetic nervous system spikes and says danger danger will robbins danger and then <laughs> It spikes all of those things and then your body needs you to run or use your muscles or think or do those things in order to burn off the extra sugar and the extra cortisol that it just sent. And if you don't do those things, then your body is kind of left in a lurch because it's like, okay, here we are with all this cortisol and blood sugar and insulin. What do we do with it? Well, then it goes to do what it's supposed to do. It stores, stores fat. So learning how to deal with your body's ebb and flow is super important. Every single person is different. Some people need more electrolytes. Some people need more water. All of you need more water. Um, there's just so many things involved. And like I said, I always say there's no cookie cutter method to having a healthy lifestyle, but there are some basic things that apply to everyone and one of them is if you want your hormones to be balanced you have to get a handle on your stress you have to figure it out you have to understand it you have to learn how to meditate or journal or whatever it is that helps reduce your stress some people find walking very helpful uh, it also reduces blood pressure and blood sugar <laughs> um, so walking is really good um, using your muscles is really good and I'm not saying like hardcore exercise because hardcore working out like thrashing at the gym that's different that's actually stressing your body in, a, in kind of a good way but if you're already stressed adding that kind of extra stress just causes more problems so when I meet women that are menopausal that are saying, I work out an hour every day, I exercise, I also do cardio. If you're doing cardio all the time, you're stressing out your body. If you're, you, you need some moderate exercise that reduces stress instead of increases stress. So you don't always wanna be going all out all the time because you actually are increasing the amount of stress that you're putting on your body. So that's something to think about. If you're interested in learning more about that, I did a video just a couple of days ago about that. It's in the group and it's um, really specific about that. Um, something else, number two, not in importance, but number two, inflammation. Inflammation can be caused by stress. It can be caused by food sensitivities. It can be caused by toxins. Uh, it can be caused by viruses or parasites even. One of the most common reasons for inflammation is food sensitivities, but also high cortisol and high insulin can add to that for sure. 
Um, if you're one of those people who finds that you have swollen fingers or swollen feet, or when you get up in the morning, you have trouble walking because your feet, you know, you have to walk like a duck, that's inflammation. And um, I know a lot of people think, oh, I need to reduce my salt, my feet are swollen. Well, there is something to that, but most of the time that's not it. You're probably low on electrolytes and your body isn't able to function the way it should. You're not getting the things out of your body that need to be out of your body. And here's a little known fact. Water is in every part of your body. It's supposed to be inside the cell, not outside the cell. So when your feet swell, it's because the water isn't able to get inside the cell and it's in the interstitial spaces. So the water is between the cells out in the places where it doesn't belong. And the only way for the water to get into the cells is for there to be a proper balance of sodium and potassium. Sodium outside, potassium inside, those two things create the electrical current together that's necessary for fluids to flow in and out of the cells. So when people say, I ate salt and it made my feet swell, because salt is the interstitial spaces and potassium is inside the cell. So if you're supplementing with one electrolyte, but not all of the electrolytes, then you could end up in an imbalance. Or if you're drinking a lot of water and you're not getting any electrolytes and you're not eating vegetables, you're not taking a multivitamin, you're not taking electrolytes on a regular basis, um, or um, you're eating grains and the grains are holding on to all of those electrolytes. A lot of times when people stop eating grains and they reduce their carbohydrate levels down, they end up dropping a bunch of water weight because those grains hold on to those minerals. And a lot of time grains are one of the reasons why people have inflammation. Sorry. I had like a brain fart there. Anyway, it was like a, it was a pause. I did a pause for the cause. <laughs> so anyway, that is reason number two. And there are a lot of hidden reasons why people have inflammation. Um, and there are a lot of names for it. Um, people, a lot of times will say they have things like fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome or, you know, things like that. And those are really just descriptions. Fibromyalgia means many pain or something like that in Latin. It means you have a lot of pain. They don't know why you have a lot of pain. Usually it's caused by inflammation. If you have chronic fatigue syndrome, it's usually caused by a lot of inflammation. And oftentimes stress is a precursor to that. Some kind of stressful event like a divorce or a death or a car accident or an injury of some kind can set you into some sort of a high inflammation state and then your body just can't calm down. And I, I really believe that a lot of that goes back to the video where I did the other day where it's vagus response, parasympathetic, sympathetic system, it's out of whack. And there are ways that you can straighten that out on your own. And they're just exercises that you do, which I talked about in that other video. So the third reason why people don't lose weight is because you don't prioritize you. You're not prioritizing taking care of yourself. And I talked to about 18 women this week because I put out that thing to do calls and I had 18 women that managed to get on my schedule for this week and I talked to all of them. And guess what? Many of them said, I would meal prep or I would exercise or I would drink more water, but I don't have the time. When are you going to make the time? When? When are you going to decide that water is important? You need to be drinking it every single day. And moving your body is important. You need to do it every single day to some degree. 20 minute walk is all I'm asking for. Um, you need to come up with some good habits and you need to prioritize them and you need to put them on your schedule. If you have a hard time with feeding yourself healthy foods because you don't have time to eat, then it's time for you to prioritize making sure that you have healthy foods. If you don't have time to drink water, 
then maybe it's time that you prioritize drinking water. Get a large cup that holds water and set an alarm on your clock. Remind yourself to do it. Do whatever you have to do to take care of you. Put it on your calendar. Make sure it happens. If you have to get up a little bit earlier to take care of yourself, I promise you the half an hour that you get up earlier will be paid back times 10 just by using that half an hour to meditate, journal, and prepare for your day. If you took 30 minutes out of your day every morning to meditate, even if you just did it for 20 minutes, write in your journal, write down some gratitude, and plan your day. This is how much water I'm gonna drink. This is what I'm gonna eat. That way, when you get to the point to where you're hungry, you already know what you're gonna eat. You don't have to figure it out. Because figuring it out in the last second when you're starving is where things go wrong. So hormones are exacerbated by stress. Inflammation is exacerbated by stress on your system like food sensitivities, toxins, viruses, things like that. And the reason that none of all of these things are working together is because you don't prioritize yourself. You don't make time for yourself. You don't do the things that you know that you need to do to make all of that come together and tie it together in a pretty little bow. Now, I mean, you don't have the education or the knowledge on how to deal with the hormone thing. I get that. And inflammation is probably a new concept to a lot of people, but I know prioritizing is not. I know that from talking to people that procrastination is definitely a problem. I've been guilty of it myself. I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying that I recognize that a lot of us have the same problems and prioritizing yourself is a big one. It's one of the main problems that women have. So that's one of the reasons why I have this group and one of the reasons why I love building a community of supportive women who have been around the block. I mean, you guys all know what it's like to deal with all of these things. You've been dealing with it your whole life. And I'm here to encourage, educate, help, and do all of the things so that you can live a better life for yourself, for your children, for your grandchildren, so that you can actually get out and enjoy life, have fun, do the things that you want to do and feel good while you're doing it. I mean, isn't that what it's about? Feeling good, feeling happy, feeling fulfilled, feeling joyful and living a healthy, vivacious life. I mean, that's what I want to do. Hopefully that's what you guys want to do. So, um, hopefully that was helpful. Like I said, I did a video just a couple days ago about the um, parasympathetic thing if you want to watch that because I think it's very very helpful and I did put it in the event earlier today as well so if any of you saw that pop up that's the video that I'm talking about I wanted to um, talk about those three things the hormones the stress the inflammation and about prioritizing yourself um, I think that is the biggest thing that most of us don't do we're always too busy taking care of other people that we don't take care of ourselves and sister it's time for you to take care of yourself and i mean you can't pour from an empty cup you can't put somebody else's oxygen mask on if you don't put yours on first there are just so many things that women are responsible for whether they're required to be or they choose to be responsible for that it's time for you to do something good for yourself it's time for you to tackle some of those negative beliefs that you have about yourself limiting beliefs and really take charge of your health and your future and learn how to live a life that you enjoy and be confident and comfortable in your own skin so hopefully you guys will grab that invite your friends and let me know if you have any questions i'm super excited about it and i can't wait to see you guys inside of the private group where we will talk about all things, all things in much greater detail.